There's a barn? What is your fascination with barns? Would it surprise you to know that China owns farmland in the USA? How much? And for what? And are they the only foreign country spreading their agricultural wings in America? The answers may surprise. With these 10 things Americans can't believe China is doing to U.S. farms. Our crop yields are so much smaller than that of mighty Latvia. Cramped for crops. You like Chinese? The food? Yeah. If you love Chinese food and those classically iconic takeout containers, you're probably aware that the American version of Chinese food is pretty distant both physically and in practicality from actual traditional Chinese cuisine. And over on that side of the Pacific, China as a nation, along with its food supply, is running into a few issues these days. There are plenty of mouths to feed, and that number is still climbing. China is estimated to have a total population of 1.425 billion people in 2023 up from 1.412 billion just three years earlier in 2021. Altogether, it's nearly 20% of the global population packed into one country, and all those folks fit into a relatively small area, giving China some pretty crazy numbers for population density, where they've decided to build things up instead of out and squeeze as many people as possible in each square mile of land. With all this Chinese congestion, a lack of farmable land is an uphill battle for hungry people from Beijing to Baoji. Hungry. Oh, God damn it. A staggeringly low 10% of the landmass is considered usable for crops. So in terms of the Chinese food that we can relate to, that's just not enough chop suey to go around. Definitely sounds bad. Okay. Expanding elsewhere. We're gonna need a bigger boat. If you've ever had to fight over that last egg roll, you can understand that sometimes you need to increase your supply through any means necessary. And China has followed that same strategy for the last couple of decades, too officially becoming a net importer of their agricultural needs in 2004 and maintaining that status ever since. To keep its food supply up with demand, China is the largest importing country on the planet for crops like corn, soybeans, and rice. White rice, brown rice, those are just some of the rices I love. In more recent years, instead of just looking for foods to import from other places, they've also expanded the idea to include finding farmland in other countries. As recently as 2021, a Chinese-owned manufacturing company called the Fufong Group purchased a sizable 300-acre parcel of farmland right here in the USA for the stated purpose of constructing a corn processing mill, where the final product could be shipped back to China. However, suspicion rose as the farm farmland happened to be a dozen miles out from the United States Air Force Base in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Two years after the purchase, Grand Forks City Council put the kibosh on the Fufong deal by a vote of 5-0 to zero in February 2023. This denied the group any rights to building permits or infrastructure construction. So despite still owning the land, the Chinese company wasn't allowed to build anything on it, including that corn mill they wanted. D Wait for it. Nied. Texas turbines. Check out my belt buckle. It says everything's bigger in Texas. Before any foreign nationals from the Pacific Rim got in trouble with the Midwest, there was a San Antonio showdown in the South. This case, however, involved a wind farm instead of a corn farm. They say everything's bigger in Texas, and that applies to the state's wind turbine count, too. Due to the sheer size of open space that Texas has to offer, the Lone Star State has over 17,000 wind turbines on its power grid. In 2019, generated wind power was just under 20% and had climbed to 25% by 2022 and is estimated to be just under 30% by the end of 2023. China attempted to enter that picture in 2015 when a Chinese automotive and industrial conglomerate called the Xinjiang Guanghui Industry Investment Group was granted permission to build a wind farm on land to be purchased from Texan ranchers. Oh, it's not for sale. Everything's for sale, buddy. And immediate backlash focused on the environmental impacts of the wind farm construction on local ranch lands and their delicate ecosystems. But the ultimate fate of the deal was the same as the North Dakota one. Local politicians just weren't comfortable with Chinese ownership of American agricultural zones. A 2021 Texas Infrastructure Act prohibited the deal and forced the land to be sold to new Spanish ownership. Once again, China's quest for foreign farmland had to saddle up the ponies and ride off into the sunset. Better luck next time. First time here? Then become an official babble topper by hitting that subscribe button. I owe you a thank you. The big bacon buyout. What I said was, 
Give me all the bacon and eggs you have. Despite recent failures in finding farmland, China's biggest and most successful American agricultural purchase happened a full decade before the wind farm idea got blown out or the corn on the cob went kaput. And it was all in the name of putting pork on their fork and putting China on the USA map. Would you like some pork? In the summer of 2013, a Chinese global agriculture and meat processing conglomerate based in Hong Kong called the WH Group purchased the American American company Smithfield Foods. The wholesale buyout was worth nearly 5 billion US dollars at the time and would just crack the 6 billion mark in today's dollars adjusted for inflation. It was touted as the largest foreign takeover of US soil, largely due to the 146,000 acres dedicated to its massive pork farm in North Carolina. As far back as 2006, the facility produced 6 billion pounds of pork and processed 27 million pigs in that fiscal year, and that efficiency and high production rate made it a perfect target for Chinese buyers a few years later. Tell you how business is. Business is great. Pigging out. And I know that's pork over here. And then, yes, pork. While government officials might be suspicious of China's real estate interests, the simplest explanation for buying a pig farm is that China really, really likes eating pork. <laughs> Yeah. In an endless variety of Chinese cuisines, pork is the unquestioned master of the meaty options on every menu. In 2021, Chinese citizens consumed more than 57 million tons of the stuff. Those numbers are more than twice the amount of pork enjoyed in the USA, where, according to the United States Department of Agriculture, pork consumption per person in 2022 averaged around 51 pounds. In China, contrast that number to upwards of 121 pounds per resident in cities like Hong Kong that same year. This all explains the urgency for a gigantic pig farming operation in North Carolina that can send a supply back to China to help meet demand. Smithfield Foods is the largest American-based producer, directly owning over 500 pig farms and contracting out another 2,100 pork facilities. This is particularly present in the pig paradise of North Carolina, where there are more pigs than people at an average count of 30 to 1, and there are enough of them that they'd account for over 2,000 pigs per every square mile. We just hope they've all got piggy passports, because thanks to Chinese investment, most of them wind up taking an overseas trip to become a main course. Everyone, meet your meat. It doesn't add up. What the hell is this? Even in the face of political unrest, the concern about foreign nationals from China scooping up all our farmers' fields might be an overreaction. From sea to shining sea, there are some 1.3 billion acres of agriculturally designated land across the USA. Of those vast acres, all but a minuscule 3% of it is not owned by Americans, which calculates out to 40 million acres of that total 1 billion being occupied by various foreign interests. And of that 3%, half of it isn't even farmland. It's densely forested areas that are almost impassable. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, China's interests own $2 billion worth of American farmlands. But while that sounds like a big, scary number, it doesn't equate to a large percentage of total ownership due to market value. All those dollar signs only paid for 384,000 acres, equivalent to 0.014% of that total total 3% that isn't owned by Americans. Just just a little. For context, even though the Fufang Group still owns that 300 acres in North Dakota, that parcel is less than one-fourth the size of an average family farm in the Peace Garden State. No problemo. Mighty neighborly. Hello, neighbor. Despite all the sweaty palms about China, when it comes to America's breadbasket, it's the maple leaf-loving neighbors to the north who are the ones encroaching on the most territory. Despite having a larger land mass than the United States, Canada has a similar problem to China in that only a small percentage of it is fertile, farmable land. So they have to knock on the doors of their neighbors to find somewhere to plant those maple trees. Knock, knock. What's gone? Your candy. Canada, more than any single national foreign interest, owns the most acres of American farmland at a total tally of 12.8 million acres. For perspective, that puts China's total owned acres all the way back at 18th overall on the list of over 100 countries that are foreign farmland investors, and much less of a hostile takeover than some politicians make it sound. Trust me, it's not as bad as it sounds. Going Dutch. Dutch? 
Double Dutch. Since Canada invented putting pineapple on pizza, for some, that would make them more of a target of anger than anything that involves farming. The same can't be said for our friends in the Netherlands, whose many traditional recipes have become American favorites thanks to generations of Dutch immigrants. Versions of pancakes, waffles, pretzels, cookies, and even coleslaw can be traced back to the Netherlands. And in turn, they're another big buyer of farmland that gets less flack than the Chinese do. At 16,000 square miles of mass and not much larger than the state of Maryland, the Netherlands is on the smaller side of European nations, yet they own 5 million U.S. acres, which is a staggering 12 times more than China. What? In fact, Dutch companies hold more American agricultural space than Italy, the United Kingdom, or Germany. Bet you didn't know. Different faces, different places. Same, same, but different. Chinese companies are not only making smaller purchases in America because of local governments pushing back, it's also because they have bigger fish to fry elsewhere, especially in places that won't give them as much hassle. From the WH Group's ownership of Smithfield Foods alone, that company's global footprint has meat processing plants in Poland, Romania, Germany, Slovakia, and the UK that are now all under Chinese ownership. Outside of Europe, Chinese companies are also purchasing parcels of land on the Asian and African continents, and from 2011 to 2020, scooped up to 25,000 square miles of it. In that time, overseas land acquisitions for China around the world totaled 14 million acres, surpassing the totals of foreign land controlled by companies from America or even companies from countries like Japan or Britain. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. So don't feel so bad about Chinese expansion. They're ringing everyone else's doorbells, too. I see what you did there. Good one. Before we hit the finish line, give this video a like as we look at a specific food staple that missed the list. Our honorable mention goes to one of the biggest things China is getting from farms in the USA, shiploads and shiploads of soybeans. China is the largest importer of soybeans in the world, and estimates place import numbers at over 100 million metric tons a year from countries like Brazil and from the USA. But surprisingly, it's not because the people are eating it, the need to bring in so many many soybeans is tied directly to China's mass consumption of pork products. 95% of soybean imports are crushed into animal feed for pig farms to keep pork servings on plates all across the nation. Because of the lack of farmland in China that we've seen, the cost to grow and harvest soybeans are much higher than in America and yield substantially less edible beans. I can save all of us. How we can save money. They'd need more than five times the current amount of their land just to have enough space to grow their own soybean crops. And with that in mind, they'll likely bring in many more boatloads of beans in the years to come. Easy money, right? Take a penny, leave a penny. Hey, it's my lucky day! A penny! Your luck just ran out! In the end, China's compensating for its taking by doing a lot of giving. What's in a China's quite efficient with the farmland it does have, and most of its agri-food sectors are big exporters of those types of excesses. China's agricultural and food exports in 2019 totaled almost 65 billion U.S. dollars worth, with top receivers of vegetables including the United States, Japan, Vietnam, and South Korea. And of course, we've all seen that Made in China label on products in our everyday lives, which is a direct result of the Chinese doing the heavy lifting and exporting on on manufacturing that can't or won't be done in the continental USA. In June 2023 alone, China exported 14 billion bucks of smartphones, 13 billion of computers, and 5.6 billion worth of cars to the United States. In the end, it seems the farmland stuff can slide as long as we get to keep our wireless headphones. They're AirPods. They're my gift for everyone. Stick around, leave us a comment, hit that subscribe button, and tap or click on another great video.